Hello, welcome to chemistry revision on the move. A mount. Now a mount is a very fundamental property in chemistry. So we're going to go through it fairly slowly and it's worth really working hard at it and making sure that you understand it thoroughly. So, the mole. Now we're not talking about that little furry animal that lives underground here of course. We are talking about the amount of a substance. Now that word amount in chemistry means the mole. So if you ever hear the word amount, then it's actually talking about the amount in moles. Okay. So uh, what else do we know, want to know about it? Well, the mole has a symbol, lowercase n, and its units, mole. Okay. It's just a number. And that's the thing to remember. It's a number. One mole, in fact, is given as the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12 isotopes. There's a particular reason for actually putting it like that and not just giving it a number like six or something like that or a dozen. But in a way, it's very similar to calling a quantity like a dozen. Now the point about it is that we can apply this particular number to a lot of different situations. So for example, the molar quantity, the amount of a substance, we can talk about the amount of particles, or we could talk about the number of moles or the amount of electrons, amount of atoms or molecules. So we can talk about one mole of sodium atoms or one mole of chlorine molecules. And notice the difference between one mole of chlorine molecules and one mole of chlorine atoms. They're not the same. So you have to be very specific when talking about moles. Because, of course, there are two moles of chlorine atoms in one mole of chlorine molecules, Cl2. And talk about ions as well, chloride ions, one mole of chloride ions, for example. Or we could also talk about one mole of sulfate ions, SO4, 2 minus. And within one mole of sulfate ions, we have one mole of sulfur and one mole, sorry, four moles of oxygen. Formulae, we can talk about one mole of magnesium chloride, MgCl2, and that contains one mole of magnesium and two moles of chlorine, and so on. We can even talk about the quantity of equations, and that will become very useful in energetics. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what is this number? What is the actual value of the number? Well, we don't know absolutely precisely down to the very individual atom, but we have something called the Avogadro constant, and its symbol is L and its units are per mole, moles to the minus one. And we can describe the Avogadro number as the number of particles in one mole. And if you're still waiting for that value, we generally take it to three decimal places as 6.023 times 10 to the 23 per mole. But of course we could go to very, very many more decimal places to find a more precise value. Now the whole point of this molar quantity is so that we can actually compare atoms of different elements. And the way that we can compare them is by considering the masses of them, comparing the masses. And this is what we do to get something called the relative atomic mass, a subscript R. What we do is we compare the mass of one atom of a particular element against one atom of carbon-12. That's where the carbon-12 comes in. Now the big problem with this of course is that some atoms of the same element will tend to have different masses because they will have different numbers of neutrons. In other words they are isotopes and we've got to take the isotopes into account when considering the mass. So we take a mean mass of an atom of an element. But of course sometimes, in fact quite often, we find that there aren't equal numbers of atoms of each isotope. So we have to take the weighted 
mean mass of one atom of an element. And what we don't want, of course, is carbon-12 uh, just comparing directly against carbon-12. We want to have um, a, a, a reasonably whole number value. And the problem is that there are some atoms that are lighter than carbon-12. So we put carbon-12 on the scale where it has a value of 12. And the way that we do that is we divide, we say it's one twelfth the mass of one atom of carbon-12. So in this way, if we were to compare uh, an atom of carbon-12 against carbon-12, the value would be 12. And the relative atomic mass of carbon is about 12. If you look on a periodic table, it's generally given as 12.001 or something like that. And the reason for that is because there are other isotopes of carbon, carbon-14 and carbon-13. And the one that really sticks out, I'm sure you've noticed, is the relative atomic mass of chlorine. Chlorine has a relative atomic mass of 35.5. And the reason for that is that we have to take into account the two major isotopes of chlorine, chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. And there's a lot more chlorine-35 than chlorine-37, which is why the relative atomic mass is weighted towards chlorine-35, giving it a value of 35. Point five. Relative molecular mass, m subscript r, we can describe in a similar sort of way, but consider a, a molecule. So we compare it against carbon-12 again, and we can take the mass of a molecule against one twelfth the mass of one atom of carbon-12. Didn't necessarily strictly always molecules to determine relative molecular mass. For example, the relative molecular mass of carbon dioxide is 44. But the relative um, molecular mass of sodium chloride is 58.5. Now, sodium chloride is not a molecule, but we still consider the relative molecular mass in that way. All they have to do, really, is sum up the relative atomic masses for the values of that compound. So carbon dioxide will be 12 for carbon plus 2 times 16 for the two oxygens. Sodium chloride would be 23 for sodium and 35.5 for chlorine. Now, molar mass. This is where we scale it up to reality. Now, so far, what we've been talking about is comparing individual atoms. And we can't see individual atoms. We can't even weigh individual atoms, or at least not easily, unless we have a mass spectrometer. But in the lab, we can't do this. But molar mass enables us to scale things up to values that we can use in the lab. Because we say that the molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance and we can define it so we're defining molar mass as the mass of one mole of a substance here symbol m notice we've got rid of the subscript r there because we're not looking at it relative to something else here we're saying it's the mass uh, of one mole so our units are grams per mole here. So, if we take, for example, the mass of one mole of sodium chloride, that has a value of 58.5 grams. So, the molar mass of sodium chloride has a value of 58.5 grams per mole. Now, how can we relate this to relative atomic mass and relative molecular mass? You've probably got the idea already. So here, we can relate the mole relative atomic mass and relative molecular mass as it being numerically equal to the mass in grams of one mole of a substance. So what we're saying here is the relative atomic mass scaled up gives us our value in grams 
for one mole of a substance. Let's take some examples of this. So the mass of one mole of sodium, for example, is 23 grams. The relative atomic mass of sodium is 23. Notice no units. The molar mass of sodium, of course, is 23 grams per mole. Gets a bit confusing, but we're still talking about the same values. If we take a compound, one mole of sodium chloride, 58.5 grams, and we can work that out from the relative molecular mass using the sum of the atomic masses, 23, uh, 23 and 35.5 giving us 58.5 for the relative molecular mass. So the mass of one mole of sodium chloride would be 58.5 grams. And of course, the amount in moles is equal to mass over molar mass. And this, of course, is an equation that you absolutely need to learn. Now, hands up those of you who are still using those silly little uh, triangles to work out rearranging equations. Shame on you. By now you, you should be able to rearrange equations. It's a very, very useful skill. So, if we wanted to rearrange this equation so we could get the uh, subject to be mass, what we need to do is take molar mass from one side of the equation up to the top on the other. So therefore we get mass is equal to number of moles times molar mass. Now in this case I'm talking about molar mass but we could really use the value for relative molecular mass in the same way. And then we can do other rearrangements as well. So, here's our equation, mass equals number of moles times molar mass. Let's rearrange and let's take the amount, number of moles, from the top on the right hand side down to the bottom on the left to get a value. For so we're getting a value for molar mass here by taking the amount from the top right down to the bottom left. Molar mass is equal to mass over amount or number of moles.